call the meeting to order and have a roll call, please, Mrs. Nash. Here. Now have Mrs. Ball and leaders in the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Silence. Please keep the following individuals in your prayers who have passed away. Isra Medeiros, aunt of Brian Ferreira, NAC Tech carpentry teacher. Olanda Trombetta, aunt of Claudia Bridges, speech and language pathologist. Kim Kariva, cousin of Doreen Flackman, school data accountability specialist. Jennifer Chambers, sister of Tara Mello, TMS teacher, and niece of Linda Matoza, RHS guidance counselor. Carol Tufts, cousin of David Kutzjani, TMS teacher. Frederick John Harrington, retired Newport public school teacher. Christopher Swistak, retired Newport public school teacher. And Ger Gerard Downing, Jr., father of Jerry Downing, district technology, technology support specialist. We'll have a moment of silence. Thank you. This evening we have the student council update and we have Maggie Cohn with us this tonight to uh, give us the update. Hello. Can everyone hear me? Hello, I'm Maggie. I'm the vice president of student council at Rogers. Um, I'm just here to talk a little bit about what the students are up to right now. Uh, we just planned the pep rally. The pep rally went very well. So far I haven't heard anything negative. So. We are obviously working to change it a little bit next year, but that will be ongoing. Um, we have three teams that have gone to finals for sports. Uh, the tennis, uh, girls tennis team won their division champions, which was very cool because they have not won a title since 2010. Um, they did lose in their last uh, round of playoffs, sadly, to North Providence, but they still won division championships. Uh, football lost their game last weekend, but they have two more games coming up, Thanksgiving game and a game against Lincoln. And then the volley volleyball team remains in playoffs. Um, when I was taking a look at the schedule earlier for uh, the um, schedule for this meeting earlier, I saw that we were going to speak on the building. There is a faculty meeting on Thursday for um, for the building and there is going to be a representative in Rogers uh, on Friday for the students to share their opinions about um, what the new building should entail. We think it's really great that they're reaching out to students to have us put our input in. Um, me personally, I would speak on an auditorium because it is one of the, one of the community assets that we would be losing because it would be turned into a cafetorium like we're in today, but um, at Rogers, it's a really great community asset because there are lots of dance companies and other shows that rent out the um, auditorium, and it's a very nice way to say that the Newport Dance Company can perform in Newport, and it's a very nice asset. Um, and there was also mention of the new schedule. I personally love the schedule. For my, I take a series of AP courses. It's very nice for AP sciences. You have enough time to do all your labs, and I've heard that there are negative feedback that sometimes the classes are a little long, but as far as I know, it's really good for AP students and honor students. And that is me wrapping up. Thank you. Thank you, Maggie. Does anybody have any questions for Maggie? All right, thanks for coming. Thank you. Next on the agenda are resolutions and certificates. And this evening, the first one is a uh, recognition of Discover Newport for the community outreach with the Pell Bridge artwork for the 50th anniversary celebration of the Pell Bridge. Uh, we had more than 150 students at Pell Elementary School in Newport. 
that created vibrant works of art depicting the Newport Pell Bridge in recognition of its 50th anniversary during the summer. The artwork was produced by the students in kindergarten through the third grade, each of whom drew their own colorful interpretations of the bridge. Student artwork of the bridge was not only on display at Fort Adams, but also in the main lobby of the Newport Post Office, Pell Elementary School, and inside the atrium of Newport Hospital. Evan Smith, President and CEO, CEO of Discover Newport and Chairman of the 50th Anniversary Celebration, contacted Superintendent Jermaine, asking Diane Sheehan, Art Supervisor, if artwork uh, of the Pell Bridge would be possible, and of course the rest is history. Art is alive and well at Pell, and our students were excited to portray one of the most iconic institutions of our community, quoted by Ms. Mrs. Sheehan. At this time, we'd like to re recognize Discover Newport for their collaboration and connection to our Pell School and young artists. As Evan Smith remarked, our youth are the future stewards of the, Pell, of the Newport Pell Bridge and will steer its prosper prosperity into the next 50 years. So I think it's Katie Coleman. Oh, there she is back there. Katie, uh, Katie Coleman is the manager of tolling and operations for the Turnpike and Bridge Authority, and she's here tonight to accept the certificate on behalf of the Turnpike and Bridge Authority and Discover Newport. So, thank you. Not, no, go ahead. Please, you know, step up there. Thank you. I just wanted to give... Just identify yourself. We know who My you name are. is Diane Sheehan. I'm the Art Supervisor of Newport Public Schools. And nice to meet you, Katie. <laughs> uh, I have a commemorative coin from the um, Discover Newport for the Pell Bridge, so each of the school committee members, I'd like to give you each one of them. Oh, thank you very much. Yes. Sure, it's not a token. Yeah. Oh, geez. Five hundred passes through. Thank you. Oh my Thank you. That is so nice. Thank you. Thank you. It's very nice, and I will also say that. Uh, Mr. Sheehan, we appreciate your work. We know that you're always uh, plugging for the Newport schools and the art program and keeping us uh, out there in the public eye. So we, yes. we also appreciate the work you do um, on behalf of the children of the Newport schools. Thank you. <laughs> Next recognition is for Coach Kessler and the baseball team, who was named the uh, New uh, what was it? National Federation of State High School Associations, Rhode Island Baseball Coach of the Year for 2018-2019. This past spring, the Rogers baseball team finished the regular season with a 17-3-0 record. The team won the Division III championship in the best of three series against Exeter West Greenwich on June 4th. This is the first baseball championship for Rogers High School since 1971. And I know Coach Kessel is here, so we'd ask him to come up and accept this on behalf of the uh, Newport School Committee. It's uh, in his honor for being named the Coach of the Year uh, for Division Three, and I can say firsthand I, I know how good the coach did with the boys this year. Um, they had a very good season, and I know he put a lot of work in, and he's very deserving of this for the work and the outcome he got out of the boys. So come on up, Coach. <laughs> First of all, thanks for recognizing uh, both myself and the team. I really appreciate that. Um, anytime we can get some uh, positive, there we go, um, recognition for the, the student athletes, I think that uh, that goes a long way. Um, when, when I found out that I was nominated uh, or was to receive the Rhode Island Coach of the Year, I was, uh, very surprised, to be honest, just because we're such a small school in, in a uh, 
state that really recognizes the bigger schools. So, um, you know, it was, it was quite an honor to receive that. And um, upon reflecting on maybe why that I had received that, uh, it just occurred to me that you can't, you can't really do what you want to do from a coaching standpoint without your players um, being buying into your, your, what you're trying to, to have them do. And from that standpoint, I think we just had a wonderful group of, of young student athletes that uh, were very coachable and um, you know brought what I asked them to bring high energy and a great attitude every day. And, and um, they did that and, and then some. And um, good things happened for us. So uh, we're looking to uh, continue upon that. And we have a great young core of, of gentlemen coming back. And uh, well, maybe we'll come back again next year and talk some more. So I appreciate it. Thank you. We hope so. Thank you. The uh, next item is uh, presentations, and the first one is a Rogers High School schedule and ninth grade academy update. And I believe Mr. Vance is going to. Yeah, that's fine. So you asked for an update on our, our block schedule as well as the, the ninth grade academy. Um, when, when we submitted the information for the school committee, um, it was two weeks prior to now. And so there, there are some, there's some updated information that I want to share that's not necessarily a part of the presentation that you guys have in front of you. Um, so instead of, when it came to the block schedule, instead of just reporting from my perspective, I surveyed staff and students. Um, and a really simple survey where it just says block schedule, love it, can live with it, hate it, or no opinion. Um, and so I surveyed the teachers and then I surveyed students. Um, so with our teaching staff, the, the percentages were, when I submitted this to you guys, it was 50% can live with it and 40.5% love it, with a 9.5% uh, of individuals uh, hating it. And then from students, it was 37.5% can live with it, 50% loved it, with a smaller numbers and hate it and no opinion. Um, so that's a pretty positive response from faculty and students about the, the, the four by four block. Um, there's some anecdotal information. So as a part of that survey, the last part was information that we needed to know. Um, and the, most of the comments were really, really positive. Um, the, the one negative was around the Monday schedule where all eight classes meet on Monday. Um, and so we've had conversations about that being like a sprint where kids are going from class to class to class um, and they're much shorter blocks of time. So it, that may be something we would reconsider for the future. But right now, based on the feedback that we received, the four by four, the Tuesday through Friday schedule, we're going to hold on to. Um, so excuse me for interrupting the committee is looking so I just want to reiterate what mr. Vance started this presentation he did this survey prior to the backup being uh, uploaded I'm sorry after it all the information had come in so it did not go into your backup for this evening what he's sharing with you right now some of it was some of it wasn't I have committee members raising their hands you can't see them so, um, so if you want to repeat what was not in the backup that would be helpful so and the, there isn't anything for the screen tonight there we can work I can work off that presentation and talk to the other right pieces. I think no, that's right. what they're looking for um, so at, initially it was 42 teachers and initially 72 students and when I pulled the updated data I had Updated that I had 49 students and then I had, no, oh, sorry, 49 staff and 82 students. Out of how many? For students? Yeah. Um, around 700. And then for staff? 75. 75. Thank you. But how did, how did you recruit those students? Like, I mean, it's not a very big percentage, so if it was only the AP classes, it might be a different response than if it was, True. you know, your kids from NAC Tech. I just worry that's not a very large percentage of students. Yep. So what I did is we have, 
we have a group email that goes out for the class of 2020, 2021, 2022, and 2023. So every student in our school has an email, and every student received the survey. So we didn't, I didn't target groups. I targeted the entire group of students. So is it possible to get to do that, like in homeroom crew, to do it so that we get a better response from kids, like could be 600? You know, with almost 700 kids in the school, it would be great to have a better response. Yeah, definitely. It's not, it's not necessarily something that we can't do. So, so the, the more updated information is going to come when we start talking about the attendance on the ninth grade academy. So that was the, the, the next update, is that what you were looking for was the feedback of, around the ninth grade academy. Um, some of the things that, that are in place for that group of teachers, it's, it's a dedicated group of staff that their primary focus is to work with our ninth grade students coming in. Um, they have CPT multiple days out during the week. Um, on Mondays, it's the full academy, so it's all, all, all staff that deal with the ninth grade. Wednesday, it's by team, so it's the two different teams, so it's a smaller breakup of what they're, the students that they're looking at. And on Fridays, they meet and they talk about content. So how do they stay in line with each other? What kind of assessments are they using? What are the results of those assessments? Um, it's really a student-centered focus with a positive, trying to build a positive culture and celebrating students. Um, so last Friday, they had a uh, student of the quarter kind of celebration and so where they recognize kids' attendance and students that had done well academically, behaviorally. And so they recognized um, 12 kids that each quarter they're going to recognize another group of 12. And then what they also recognized was the 35 ninth graders that have perfect attendance. Um, one, of the, one of the bits of information that I wanted to be able to pull, but because of where we, we are in the year, I don't have the data yet. The term actually closes tonight. Grades have to be submitted for tonight. So if we had one more day, I could have gotten you the failure rate and compared it to the last two years. Um, and I can almost guarantee that it's markedly improved. Can I ask a Go question ahead. on the celebrating students? So you said you have a um, student of the quarter celebration? Yes. And so you celebrate, the obviously, the students who succeeded. Is everybody invited to those? Every student still invited to it, and then you celebrate the? Correct. So the entire ninth grade. The entire ninth grade participates in it? Yep. And that's every quarter? That's, yeah. That's great. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. It was really a nice event, and actually, some kiddos that ne didn't necessarily get recognized were really enthusiastically supporting their, their peers that were. Um, so it was really positive. You know, and they, were, they listed the 35 kids that had perfect attendance. They highlighted the 12 kids that got the award. It was just, it was yeah. a really nice event on Friday. Yep. Yeah. Nice. So, yeah, so we started, um, it's student of the month, teacher of the month, and support staff of the month. And so every month I send a survey out looking for recommendations from our teachers and our, and our students. Um, who would they recognize as being a positive person you know, in the building? And so we get a teacher every month, a support staff. So that's like our custodial staff, our maintenance, our secretaries, our paras, and then students. Um, and so right now I'm just in the process of kind of running through the rest of the data for November to put another bunch of staff up on the wall. Yep. That's great. Anything else? Um, Any other questions? Yeah, one more. Yep. It's only for the attendance on the sheet. On what we have, you had 60 ninth graders with perfect school attendance. Yeah, so that it's probably higher now. I mean, or lower. I don't know. But is it more or less than last year? At um, this time of year. It's more. It's more. It's more. Yeah. So the amount of kids that we have in, on the ninth grade that have perfect attendance is definitely higher than it was last no, year. Okay. Um, and one of the data pieces that would, would have been in the update, um, looking at our tier three students, yeah. students that have three or more absences. Mm -hmm. And so I really needed to wait to see where for the term to kind of come to a close to be able to pull that. And so at the end of first quarter from last year, our tier three students was 49 kids. Right. This year we have 17. Nice. That's, that's a huge improvement. Why did you say 40 it says 49 so that's a sheet? that's a typo that's and, a type, yeah, and that that's needed to be updated. Good. So I submitted it, mm -hmm. and then it says 49 okay. instead of 17. And how about for the tier two? Oh, yeah. that's, the, yeah. that's correct. That's accurate. That's
So across the board, basically, it's gone down. Correct. It's great. It's great. Yeah, it's been a positive addition, definitely. Mr. Come. Chairman, if I could follow up a question. Mr. Vance, could you have the uh, data from... Pull that microphone a little closer, Bob. We can't Thank hear you. you. Mr. Vance, you have the data from September 18, absenteeism, versus data from September um, 19, the whole month, for the whole school? I don't have it in front of me, but I can get it. Yeah, we need to show the comparison. I want to see how many kids were absent in, you know, total for September of this year versus September last year, and same way with October. Yeah. That gives you the comparison and you know where you're at. You say they're up, and I trust you, you're right, but we need to, we need to see that as, as a person. No. Mr. Okay. Leary, um, if you same. look at uh, your backup uh, for C-Tree, you will see that comparison for November. We can certainly give you September and October, but we did it for November as well, and you were provided with an update from last year. Mr. Gomes actually asked for that. So, but we will get you September and October as well. Right, and the other question I have is uh, the bar grant. Uh, the bar grant expires this year? No. No. No? No? When's that expire? Uh, actually, we have two years, uh, and we are eligible for renewal. So um, right now, as of now, it's 2021. And they do all the PD for this, this block scheduling? They... They do all the professional development for teaching in the classroom, and um, it is to help better train the teachers for block scheduling. I'm going to let Mr. Vance speak a little bit more on it's more than just the block scheduling instruction. So the, so the, the primary focus is really around student-centered learning and student-centered activities, so it's whether it's project-based or some other model. Um, and in, in those trainings, they talk about extending lessons and activities and grouping patterns to be able to fill that 80 minute block of time. So it is a support to the block, but the primary focus is not the block. It's about student-centered learning. And what is a crew period? Crew, it's like advisory. We rebranded it and called it crew last year. So that's how we personalize for students and build relationships. And that's every day? Every day but Monday. Every day but Monday. How long is that? 25 minutes. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Boatwright. Yeah. Uh, I know you have the AmeriCorps students in there, and could you just give us, um, um, are they helping? I mean, it's a like teamwork, I'm assuming, but maybe you could give us the highlights as to what exactly is having the most effect on the attendance, please. So we've really, we've, we have just put a lot of focus on getting kids to school, whether it's the shift with our extracurricular activities or crew being supportive and having relationships with students. Um, that's been a huge positive. But then the AmeriCorps folks, they're working on our kids that are kind of on the fence. They're not truant yet, but they potentially could be. Um, and so their focus in the beginning of the year was just really about re building relationships with a small group of kids. And then it's going to morph into talking about why are they coming to school? Why are they not coming to school? What kind of supports do they need to come come regularly? Um, one of our AmeriCorps folks works primarily with the ninth grade academy. The other two split the other three grades. So again, that has been pretty positive as well. Good. Ms. Uh Yeah, there was talk last year that uh, we would start making phone calls, and you know, when kids are absent, is that taking place? Have we changed the way? You know, and, and, and improve the system of making sure that, that all kids are being recorded properly in class? Yep, so that's been a major focus from day one with staff, making sure that first period attendance is accurate, and then making sure every period following that is accurate as well. Um, phone calls are going home. We've regrouped students so that there's smaller numbers of, of students that need to be called, whether it's the dean or guidance or teachers on the freshman academy or the AmeriCorps folks or, you know, the like Orlando Peace from the Boys and Girls Club. So there's a larger group of people making phone calls with smaller numbers that they have to manage. Mr. Chairman, one more question. I have to ask this in, in, in any way to look at it. We've been over, Rogers last year was ranked uh, second to last school in attendance in the state. And I, I don't understand, you say you're making improvement this year. Why hasn't this been done in the last couple of years? Why, I mean, we had over 50,000 kids, incidents of kids being absent for three or four years running straight. 
and now all of a sudden we got to push. Is it because we started pushing it? Or what, what, I mean, what, why all of a sudden is push to it now? So this was this was a focus that we started at the beginning of last year when we we shifted the model from advisory to crew, and relationships just don't happen overnight. So you need to build relationships with students so that they feel connected with the building. So that first year, that's really what it was. How do we cultivate positive relationships with our students and our families? So the, now moving into the second year, this is when you would start to see the benefits of that work. Um, so it's not anything that can happen overnight and quickly. It takes time to build those relationships and supports. Um, and also last year we were looking at phone calls and there were large numbers of calls having to go out by a small number of adults. And so now we've kind of redistributed that so that it's a more manageable number. Ms. Bogart. Yeah, I do have one other question. Just um, when you look back at the block schedule, is there anything, is there anything in the people who hate it, of the p teachers in particular, would it be, we heard last year that math, there's certain subjects that don't like it as much as others. Did you find that to be the case? So with our staff doing the survey, I wasn't collecting emails. So I can't really say if this was a math person or a science person. You know, I want people to be able to fill those out anonymously so that they can be honest. Right. Um, How about personal feedback? So the, there is definitely anecdotal information that came back in the in the survey, and the biggest focus was really around the Monday and the eight periods in one day. Mm -hmm. um, outside of that, it, there were a couple folks that said it might be a little bit too long for certain types of kids, um, but it wasn't a general broad brush. I hate the schedule altogether. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next presentation will be Dr. Bean uh, giving us an update on the uh, 2019 student assessment data. Tonight we did a kind of one-page overview of the uh, the most recent data that we received, which is the RICAS math and ELA for grade three through eight, and the PSAT SAT data for grades ten and eleven. Uh, the state report card data is still embargoed, so uh, we've um, we'll plan to come back for a workshop to dig deeper into the data um, so that we can report the, uh, the uh, school report card accountability data. Okay. So what I did was I took um, some snapshots of uh, the data that we've looked at for the past uh, two weeks uh, in terms of ELA and math and then uh, the PSAT and the SAT. Uh, for those of you who remember last year, we set some pretty aggressive goals uh, with the first round of RIDECAS and um, understanding the new indexes um, that RIDE had set. Uh, and so we had set goals of uh, improving ELA uh, by 10% at the elementary, the middle, and at the high school with the PSATs and the SATs. Uh, we also set a goal of improving math by 10% for uh, the uh, elementary and the middle school and a 5% increase at the high school. Uh, so in some areas, uh, in some particular grades, we did meet our goal in the ELA uh, and, um, and we did um, just meet, uh, just barely meet um, in one particular grade around the math. So that, that's how I've kind of broken this up, um, this snapshot view for tonight. For the RICAS ELA, again, um, that's grades three through eight. 
uh, in the RICAS ELA, um, for people who are not aware, uh, the students who have been in the country a year or less um, are exempt from the ELA that first year. However, they are um, required to take the math and the um, next generation science assessment. So they are not exempt uh, from those assessments. The same thing holds for the PSAT and the SAT. So they would be exempt from ELA if they are new to the country, um, but they do have to take the math and the science. So in uh, the RICAS ELA, uh, we saw increases in grades three, five, and seven. Uh, grade seven uh, was uh, one of the grades who met our goal with a 10% increase. Uh, we had in our subgroups, when we look at the state data and, and at our um, workshop, we will you know, break this down more for you. Uh, for some of our subgroups that we uh, look at, we had an 8% increase with our students of color. We had a 5% increase with students who are designated as two or more races. Uh, and also we looked at our cohorts of students. So, you know, when we look at the RICAS data, we're getting our, our data based on grades and, and they compare it from, you know, one grade to the next grade. Uh, but we also wanted to look at um, cohorts of students. Uh, so in this case, um, grade seven, who took the RICAS the very first year, school year 18, and then now they were eighth graders last year, school year 19. Uh, with that particular cohort, we saw an 8% increase in the ELA. Uh, just uh, to give you some context around um, the numbers of students that were exempt throughout grades three through eight, we had 86 students who um, excuse me, we had 86 students who did take the um, ELA test. Uh, and then in terms of the RICAS ELA, uh, we, we did not see an increase with our students who receive English language services or our special ed um, overall district-wide. In certain grade level groups, we saw bumps, but then when you're averaging it among grades three through eight. Uh, one of the things that we also always look at is how many students are we moving from that not meeting to that partially met? And all of that will come out um, when um, we're allowed to share the state report card because we do get credit for the numbers of students that we move from one group to the other. And that's how they measure our growth. So you can have cohorts of students who are not meeting the state testing, but if they're moving out of not met to partially met, uh, that, you know, that does impact our growth, and we do get credit for that. Uh, a cohort that we've been looking at is our, our <coughs> cohort um, that was in grade three in 18, and then now grade four in 19, so they would be our present fifth grade students. Um, we saw a 3% decrease in our ELA. So we, we start to look at that cohort of students, also knowing that we have about a 15% mobility rate. Uh, but, you know, we want to look at, you know, who are those students and, um, and, and why did we have that decline? So those are some of the things that the principals and I um, have been looking at uh, over the past week and a half since the, the data has um, uh, been available. So that's a little a snapshot about the ELA. Uh, for the RICAS math, we saw increases in grades four, seven, and eight. We saw a 5% increase in grade four. Uh, we saw a 5% increase with students who need ELL support. We saw a 4% increase with students of color. And we saw a 7% increase in the cohort 5-6. Those would be our current grade seven students. Uh, 120 e students who need ELL support were tested with the RICAS math. Uh, and the areas of concern, again, for us were our students who received special ed support 
and we also saw a 7% decrease with the, that third, fourth grade cohort. Uh, so presently, uh, we are working with the Department of Ed and Ed Reports, which reviews curriculum. We're looking at, uh, with a team from Pell and Thompson, we're looking at, uh, just at the very beginning stages of looking at some ELA curriculums. Uh, we implemented Foundations, which is a phonics-based program, and we moved it up into grade two. Last year we did uh, professional development with grades K and one. Uh, the principals have started to uh, look at the release tasks that are available to us uh, based on grade level and based on individual student cohorts, and they're embedding uh, those uh, RICAS release tasks right now. Uh, students who are receiving ELL support and are at a, um, a level three on the access testing, um, Dr. Mooney has been trying to work on um, creating more push-in models for students. However, I do have to say that um, all the planning that went behind um, the development of the different programs for this year. Uh, has definitely been impacted by um, over 120 new ELL students who have um, come into our district since September. Uh, however, um, Dr. Mooney and the um, ELL teachers from Thompson, uh, they do have a, an English language development block uh, at, the, um, at the Thompson uh, Middle School. Also this year, we have implemented a new math curriculum in grades K through five, and the teachers uh, continue to have ongoing PD with the program called Ready Math. That's a math program that we also worked with RIDE and Ed Reports last year with over 17 other districts in the state, uh, looking at uh, math curriculums who uh, met the rigor of the Ed Reports um, guidance. So that's just a little about the RICAS data for ELA and math. I don't know if you want me to stop before I go into the PSAT and SAT. Ms. Bone. Do we know what the mobility rate for ELL students is every year? Do we track that individually? Like how many are new, you know, how many are new each year, how many stay? So when, when we look at, I mean, Ronnie Lee might be able to talk about the mobility rate, but it would be interesting to track it, you know, to see if it's a more mobile. I mean, generally, we've been told it's 20% every year for just the general population of students, right? And so it would be interesting to see what that mobility is mm -hmm. if you just separate ELL out, you know, to see what... One of the things on the, uh, the state testing, when we look at our subgroups, it will note on um, the testing scores for individual students where they're at in the program. So it'll, it'll say, you know, one, two, three. So that's telling us how many years they've been in the program. And then if, they've, um, if they're in that monitoring status, so they're no longer receiving direct support, but they're considered a monitor, uh, they'll also tell us how many years they've been in the monitoring portion of the program. Uh, so, you know, something that I always zoom in on when I'm looking at the state data is to look at, you know, where our students are in that partially met section, because that's um, something that, you know, our reading teachers and our math interventionists always talk about are those fence sitter students who, you know, with um, maybe some little extra intervention um, or even just a frank data conversation about how close they were um, and what was that particular question. What we're finding for, you know, most of those students who miss the question by a less than 10 points, it's, it's, that big, it's that big question. It's that question that has the multiple Parts. It's the question that they're interacting with three different pieces of literature, um, nonfiction and fiction, and then talking about the author's view. 
um, that, that would be an example of the ELA. The math, again, is the multi-word problem with the multiple, multiple parts to it. And those are, those are those seven to eight point questions that we're seeing um, really incredible numbers of students who, who just missed. I mean, grade five alone, we had 31 students in grade five that missed the um, meeting by one question. 31 students, that would be an increase of 22%. So, you know, there, there, there's definitely uh, the ability, right? Uh, it's, it's just that perseverance and really breaking down those release tasks in terms of, you know, what, what, is, that what is that last piece of information that they're struggling with or, or is it, you know, test fatigue or, you know, but having those data conversations with kids, but 31 students who missed by one question is, is huge. Grade four had 20 students. Grade eight had 16 students. That, that was um, just on the ELA. Uh, for the math, we had in grade eight, 25 students who missed it by one question. Uh, grade four, 21, question, 21 students. Grade six, 22 students. So, you know, that, to, they missed by one question. So there is, you know, definitely students that can do this test. And it's an aggressive test. I, you know, if you've, if you've looked at the test, it's, um, you know, we, we talk about that show, are, you know, you're smarter than a fifth grader. You know, the, the questions are meaty. They're, you know, you have to know all your, um, you, you need to know your algebraic equations. You need to know how to solve for geometry. You, you, you need to know your stuff in order to do well on these tests. And so it, to me, it's very promising. It's doable um, to have those kinds of numbers of students who miss the question, um, miss by one question. The, uh, I have a question about that. Sure, yeah. sure. Can, can we get um, at some point um, information on how many like did were band jumpers this year? Like did that improve from the last year that they took it, you know? The, from the meeting to the exceeding? Or from any, yeah, from partial to. Yep. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah. just to see if that's the way we want to do better each year. Right, okay. yeah, and, that, and those bands um, should be on the backup. It's just yeah. we didn't have the, um, the, work, the accountability report card for this meeting, so I figured a workshop might make more sense. Yeah. Mrs. Oh, Mrs. Neary? I have a question, and I think it's more, it's a more global question than a, um, in the weeds question. So we certainly see some improvements, but um, when we look at the overall numbers, we're still, we're still, pretty, we're still below the state. Mm -hmm. So to what do you attribute that? Because that's, yes, we are making improvements. We're still below where the state is, and the state itself is still not at 50%. So there's room to improvement. So what do you attribute to, so again, it's a global question, what do you attribute to that and what do we do to, um, to make sure that we are, that we're above at least, at least at the state level? Right, so th that's why, like I mentioned, the first thing that I always do is look at that partially met and look at the number of students that are missing it that are very close. Because that can give us an indication on, you know, what, what are, what is our curriculum either not doing for us or doing for us, right? So one of the things that we said over the past couple of years when we looked at the park as well as the first year of RICAS is our math curriculum. We, we knew from, the, from uh, early on with the math curriculum that the coherence with, the, with the, what the standards were that students needed to be secure on before they met, went to the next standard were not in alignment with that curriculum. So from the beginning we were kind of piecemealing that resource together to work for us. Then we started to supplement with different other tools with Reflex Math and Dreambox to give the kids more um, opportunity for fluency. Uh, in our reading program, we immediately started rewriting all the writing tasks. So all of a sudden, you know, your curriculum resource isn't working for you and you're starting to supplement. So, you know, over the past couple of years, that's really what we've been focusing on is looking at the, the curriculum resource so that teachers aren't spending a lot of time trying to put in 
other pieces and then what happens when teachers are putting in other pieces is then you don't have the consistency you don't have the equity from classroom to classroom so that's one of the things that you know we've been working on over the past um, couple of years to make sure that our curriculum is matching the standards that we're telling the students that they need to be able to do because this is what the test measures is the standards that we've we've adopted um, so that's one of the things that we've really been looking at is is the curriculum and the professional development the new math program that we have right now has a lot of mathematical discourse so it's giving students a lot of opportunity to defend their their thinking about how they're tackling word problems so there's a lot of conversation around um, their mathematical operations so that was one of the things that We've been working with the um, multi-tiered systems of support with RIDE. They have a math um, grant that we wrote a couple years ago, and that has been a big focus throughout the state, is mathematical discourse. Uh, uh, there's been a lot of books on you know, number talks, and uh, so that's part of the professional development that we're doing with uh, our K-5 teachers. Right, because I was gonna ask that question. So if we've implemented a new math curriculum, this year. Are, the, are the teachers comfortable teaching that new math curriculum? Or are well, they getting there? there? I mean, it's right. Yeah, anytime there's something new, you know, there's growing pains. It's, mm -hmm. it's a different approach. Uh, with, there's a lot of reading in this math curriculum. Uh, however, we've had, uh, you know, we've met with other districts around the state who've had this program for multiple years and have had great success. Uh, and it, it was one of the um, most sought curriculums when we were working with ed reports in other districts uh, was the, the ready math. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've been you know, working with um, instructional partners. They were part of this group with ed reports um, and also working with ready math the company that we purchased the curriculum from so they've been doing ongoing pd we have a conference call with them with our instructional leads uh this week uh to check in and see how things are going so that we can plan out the pd for january so we just had pd in october we had pd in september and then we ran pd with um that company and the other company we were piloting um last year so it would okay. so to answer your question anytime you start you know i know anytime you start something new but right. we well, knew we yeah. had to do something um, in terms of the curriculum and that coherence and also the rigor um, of our former program were two big pieces that were um brought out in in the ed reports so the ed reports looks at focus rigor coherence and teacher usability so those were the four components that ed reports pulls out of all different curriculums um, e both ela and math and now they're they're starting to go into science curriculums i think the other thing just to sidebar comment is getting our students to understand they can do this giving them the confidence and the support and getting them to understand the importance of perseverance and you have to keep at it that's how you learn and that kind of global approach as far as a community a district in the classroom with students giving them the understanding that they do know how to do that and that's why they're here you're here to learn you come to school to learn and they also need to learn about themselves as learners but I think on, from the adult perspective, I think how often do we have conversations with them like, how's school going? How are you doing in your class today? I think those things are very important to let them know that their education is important. And I think for families and communications, helping to support parents so they can help their students. So that's the other side to it, is along with the quality curriculum and the implementation of it. I know Dr. Bean's working very hard with the teachers and the professional development and supports, but also just as adults in the learning environment, stressing the importance of that perseverance, that confidence building in them that they can do it. So I want to ask a quick follow-up question on that. Um, 
uh, never mind. You know what? I'll ask it at the workshop because we could be here for hours. Never mind. I'll ask it. Things, things for me to look forward to. I yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. All right, so on the PSAT and SAT, uh, I know um, Jared is uh, very, very pleased with the PSAT and SAT results. Uh, he, his school <laughs> met both, um, both their goals in ELA uh, with a 10% increase in ELA and on the PSAT and a 10% increase in ELA on the SAT. When I was working with uh, Phyllis Lynch at the Department of Ed, looking at the indexes from the first, you know, rollout of all this data and trying to figure out, you know, um, looking at the um, the new state report card and how in, how to set goals, uh, you know, she kept cautioning that you know maybe 10% was uh, you know really aggressive, and so this is uh, so exciting for, for Rogers, uh, but to have um, them meet both in the PSAT, so the 10th graders who take the PSAT, and then the 11th graders who take the SAT. Uh, we saw increases uh, on the PSAT uh, with a 6% increase with students who are um, in poverty. We saw a 7% increase with students needing ELL supports. Uh, on the SAT, we saw an 11% increase with students who are in poverty, and we saw a 21 increase of students who are categorized as two or more races. Uh, the, these are really awesome, awesome uh, results for the high school. And we also saw uh, a 5% increase in math on the SATs. Uh, we, in Back on the PSAT for the math, we did have a 1% decrease in the math. And again, our subgroups for ELL and special ed um, are you know, still a sub, two subgroups um, that we really have to um, monitor. The other thing, though, we have to constantly remind ourselves is that our students who need ELL supports uh, for their basic language, their you know, social language, it takes students from one to three years to acquire their social language, to, to acquire their cognitive linguistic performance, educational performance, it takes anywhere from three to seven years. So when you think about a student that's coming in to us uh, who may have had significant interrupted education as well, um, and then you know, they're required to take the math that has an incredible amount of write, reading in it, they're required to take the science. Um, you know, the, these students are really working hard, persevering. The teachers are, uh, you know, going into the different um, classrooms over the past couple months, whether we were doing um, our instructional rounds or just um, popping in into classrooms to look at different um, curriculum focuses. Teachers are interacting Googling back and forth between Google Translate, using different methods to be able to make the content comprehensible for our growing number of, of um, students who need ELL support. So the teachers are working incredibly hard um, and, and, our, and our numbers continue to increase. Uh, presently using um, our new ELL curriculum uh, and the increase in ELL staffing to support content areas has been a positive. However, like I just said, our, our numbers continue to increase. Uh, we continue to work with Sizer, who is our vendor that was selected from um, the work that we did with BAR um, on common assessments and uh, proficiency-based projects. Uh, students who are receiving ELL support are now also receiving a separate um, English language development block and also students are receiving support in their content area. So the ELL teacher is pushing in into science, social studies, math, and ELA. Um, and our other ELL uh, teacher at Rogers is doing that ELD class. So the, t the students are getting a formal EL ELD class and it's also counting as their English credit. Um, so those are just a few of the um, snapshots from the RICAST data and from the results from the PSAT and SAT data. And like I said, the, the state report card um, is still embargoed. Uh, 
And so we've just started to look at that data and, um, and then you know, at a future date, we'll, we'll be able to share um, more on that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, a couple questions to Larry. Um, one generic question. On the ready math, um, Ms. Uh, Kim, is, is the, um, how many teachers have signed up for that PD in the ready math? So it's, it's implementation of a new curriculum. So it's every teacher K to five, and then uh, the resource teachers from Pell have been involved in the professional development as, along with our two math slash STEM interventionists. So it's, it's about 65 70 teachers who are involved in the professional development. Have they all signed up? Yeah, it's the curriculum that they're implementing, so they, they have to go. So just one generic comment, and I know um, Ms. Neary has some questions. It's funny um, how test results look depending on where you sit. Thank you. Um, on the teachers um, implementing ready math, so that's K-5. So this building has K-4. So for Thompson, then it's the two math teachers? Are right. they included so, in, that, in the group? Yes. So the two fifth grade math teachers last year when we were field testing different curriculums, they were part of the professional development. Right. So we organized the days so that they could get over here to be part of the professional development. And then um, one of our professional development days before school started uh, was another PD day. And then in October, our early release day, they, they were over here. Uh, next week when we have our conference call, they're, they're keyed in on the, um, the conference call as well. So anything that goes out from Ready Math always goes to the principal and to um, Kate Wilson, who's the uh, curriculum liaison for Thompson, the math curriculum liaison, and then the two fifth grade math teachers. Okay. Just wanted to make sure they don't get forgotten. Is there no, I, I, I would never forget my fifth grade yeah. friends. Thank you. <laughs> One more question, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Leary. What's the um, math achievement gap for Pell? The achievement gap? Yeah. So I, in terms of how many students in third and fourth grade who partially to not meeting, is that what you mean yeah, in each what's, grade? Yeah, what's the trend um, line been like for that? Yeah, so when we look at, um, So in third grade for math, we don't, we don't have a comparison for the cohort, but we do have the two years of grade three in math. Um, just get to math. So in 18, our third graders were 25% of the students met or exceeded and in school year 19, 24%. So we went down by 1%. In grade four, in 18, 13% of the students met or exceeded. And last year, 18% met or exceeded. So they went up by 5% in um, last year. So overall, the state went up three percent and uh, like I said we went down one percent in grade three and we went up five percent in grade four thanks okay, thank you we'll look forward to the workshop thanks okay. yeah. uh, next order of business is public comment mrs. Nash do we have anybody signed up for public comment
everybody. Uh, Stephanie Winslow, 5 Roland Road, Newport. Um, totally changed the subject. I've been hearing a lot of discussion during the school building committee meetings. Um, the, there were some design charrettes held lately. Uh, and just kind of around town, people I talked to about engaging the community in both the financing and design of a possible new high school. Um, and if you look at the strategic plan, right, number seven is one Newport, community engagement and partnerships. I'll just read a little. Um, the purpose of the One Newport Initiative team is to advocate for the Newport Public Schools strategic plan and work in collaboration with community partners to unify and mobilize support for the public schools. Um, some objectives identify the opportunities for what organizations, agencies, groups, businesses, foundations, <clears throat> and individuals that will ensure the success of the various objectives targeted in the strategic plan. Establish working relationships with community entities to collaborate and partner in advancing strategic plan objectives, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I really just would like to ask, is the One Newport Initiative still considered active? And if so, can we get an update on what recent things One Newport has done to advocate not only for the strategic plan and the school committee, but the school building committee and especially building a high school of adequate size that was requested by teachers and the staff and also the pre-K early learning center. That's all. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Did she, she get a response in any way? Uh, you can address it briefly. Mm -hmm. You can right. um, at a later time. Right. I mean, I was just going to say that um, there is a one Newport outreach group that Kendra sitting next to you went to and you should get invited to with Ken Nomiyama and another group along with other things that are going on in the school system. But I'll make sure you, they reach out to you. I agree. <laughs> Can't hear you. I'm sorry. I believe your question is are they active? Yeah. And, and they are. Yes, they are. And they right. have been meeting, and yeah. they've actually been attending some events as well. So okay. they are active. Um, we can have Mr. I'll get Ken, Ken Nomiyama to, to get, put, put, you put that list. down as an action item. So he'll get, he'll reach out to you. But you're right, they want to figure out how to participate better. Um, so that's an action to occur. So thank you. Is that it, Mrs. Nash? All right. Next item is action items. 6.1 is request for approval of the administrative salaries, fiscal year 2020. Uh, there would be a motion in order to approve the document that was uh, worked on in the executive session prior to the meeting tonight. So moved. Second. Motion made by Mrs. Boland, seconded by Dr. Flowers. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries four to two. Request for approval of URI SMILE contract uh, revised by Dr. Bean. Is there a motion to approve as presented this evening? So moved. So moved. Second. Uh, motion has been made and seconded by Mrs. Boatwright, seconded by Dr. Flowers. Any questions? Mr. Chairman, could uh, Ms. Bean give a brief explanation for the public, the TV audience, what, what, what SMILE is? So. Sure. It, I think it's just a, a minor change that was made to what was approved. Dr. Bean? Sure. Uh, at the beginning of the year, we uh, always ask the teachers who are the uh, supervisors of the SMILE program if they're going to continue on uh, in their position and uh, we did not have a high school um, teacher and so we put Jared Vance and I put it out again after the school year got going and people got more settled and um, we had a, a high school teacher who was willing to take on the group so we got back in touch with um, the smiles people and they were thrilled and so that's why the contract is back in front of you so we now have a high school teacher
to lead the, um, the students. There was a, a good sized cohort from eighth grade that came up to ninth grade and also um, current Rogers students who um, enjoy the program and wanted to be part of it. So could you briefly explain for any new audience, uh, viewing audience, what SMILE program is? Sure, the, the SMILES program is a grade uh, four through high school. Um, there's three different uh, groups. Uh, there's a, a grade four, five group that comes to Pell. Uh, and then there is a six, eight group at Thompson. And then there's the high school group. And they do a variety of different science experiments. They go on retreats together. Um, they, um, it's a, a very active uh, program. They have different showcases throughout the year so that we can um, see the different um, computer type programs that they're doing. They're doing coding, they're doing science experiments. They're, um, yeah, it's, a great, uh, it's a great program for a lot of kids. Uh, and a lot of kids stick with it for many years. So we were thrilled to be able to have a a high school teacher take on the, the high school group. The data also shows that those that complete the program have a better chance of going on to post-secondary education as well. Yeah, and there's scholarships that they can apply for as well if they've been part of the program. Mr. Larry, you don't have one more question? I'll ask it for you. <laughs> Could you explain how that's paid for, please? My famous words, Your by famous a grant. Words. Thank you. We know that. <laughs> Any uh, other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next item is 6.3, request for approval to hire meals advocates for TMS in Rogers High School, presented by Ms. Boland. Is there a mo motion to accept as presented this evening? So moved. Okay. Second. Second. Mrs. Neary, any discussion? Ms. Bowen? No. Okay. No. Mr. Leary? Oh, I'm good, thanks. You, you okay. So uh, we're talking about the stipend, right? Correct. The, the approval of a stipend of $4,000 yes. for the meal advocates. Yes. Okay. Oh, seeing no discussion, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 6.4 is request for approval of a revised fiscal year 20 budget uh, as presented this evening. Is there a motion to approve as presented? Uh, so moved. Mrs. Second. Neary, seconded by Dr. Flowers. Discussion. Mrs. Boatwright, would you like to? Yeah, make so some um, when we put the budget together, we didn't have the all the actuals for the end of last year going forward, and then there's movement. Um, with teaching staff from building to building. So what we want to do is um, is approve the new budget, which is in the, um, in the packets that we have today, versus what was the proposed budget from last spring. And just, uh, I would ask, and I, I know the answer, but the overall budget does not change. The total is still the total. It's just that the incremental lines have been adjusted to fit that total. Correct. It's just allocated in different ways by um, both salaries as well as um, schools and functions. So, but the bottom line is the same. Any questions? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, could we have the business manager get some uh, TV FaceTime and do a little explain on the budget maybe? So he would like, he oh, would could, go you ahead. have to pull that a little closer. Yeah. But he was asking if the business manager could get a little FaceTime on TV and explain the budget, the new to the old, and where we're at for a plus or minus, et cetera, like that. Sure. So I'll turn it over, but I just would take this opportunity to introduce the new business yeah. manager, is Ronnie Gonzalez. And uh, I think he's been here a grand total of two and a half, maybe three weeks so far. So um, the best you can right at the moment. but. If you could answer some of Mr. Leary's questions, that'd be great. Actually, I, um, I, I don't have a good answer for you, uh, Mr. Leary. I, I need a little bit more time, if you don't mind. Okay. Great. I don't think it's on. I, I 
put that together if you need to go through it. Do you want to really go through it by department? No, no, that, that's fine. We, we, well, for the benefit of public right now, are we in the hole presently? I know, I know it's only November 12th, but we're short. We're presently in the hole. Am I correct? Um, if you don't mind, uh, would you give me one more month uh, yeah, no to problem. prepare? Yep. Thank you. Any other questions on the proposed changes to the fiscal 20 budget? See no other discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 6.5 is a request for approval to issue an RFP uh, for the hiring of an owner project manager for the uh, ongoing uh, school building committee to assist them in the ongoing sure. progress. Uh, to the stage two application for ride. Is there a motion to approve as presented this evening? So, so moved. Mrs. Boland, second by Ms. Boatwright. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? Mr. Uh, Chairman, to give some could they explain the, uh, oh, just, Ms. Boland, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Well, where um, we wanted to put out an RFP, but the state has identified some um, some project managers who are already qualified in doing this kind of work. We want them to come in and look at stage two before it is submitted to just verify um, that the numbers are correct and have a second opinion really on it, right? So we're going to, um, in the next few weeks, interview some of these people who are on the state list as qualified OPMs. Is that correct? That is correct. Just to be clear for the audience, so the request is for an RFP. We do not necessarily have to go out to for an RFP because the state already has run a clearinghouse, I'll call it, and there are some listed on the master price agreement because during this process, it is a very fast process, and now that we are now in stage two, we do need to bring in an OPM to um, help assist the school committee side and the facilities uh, group as far as moving forward, as far as the design, the application, et cetera. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, this doesn't it's a ride requirement. Right. This Thank does you. not necessarily mean this will be the OPM we'll use for the project. That'll go back out to bid uh, after if, if the uh, bond passes, right? Whatever the committee decides, Decide. that they is can correct. Use it or this they is don't just have for to. stage two. Right. Can you define for everyone what OPM stands for? Owner's Project Manager. Thank you. I mean, right. I know, but they're looking out for the, the school's best interests in the, in the city. In the city. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Leary. So, Ms., uh, either Mrs. Bovite or Mrs. Uh, Bowen, the OPM is going to get paid, am I correct, even though it's on the state master price yes. agreement? Yes. So my, I will not be supporting this. We've had good luck with uh, Jim Ferrara at Pell and at Thompson, and he's not on the master price agreement list, so he's a local who can't even go to this thing. And I, I get we can change it if the bond passes, but, I mean, he should have been involved from the get-go, in my opinion. So that being said, I will not support this. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Hey. Mr. Leary. Next item is 6.6, .6, a request for approval to issue an RFP for high school students. Uh, is there a motion to approve as uh, presented this evening? So moved. Second. Ms. Ms. Neary, seconded by Ms. Bolin. Uh, Superintendent Germain, if you'd like to explain briefly, and then we can take questions if needed. Right. I just simply put this on the agenda to make sure that from uh, public perception, et cetera, that the school committee and school department is doing all its due uh, diligence as far as looking at costs for the future regarding high school education and especially looking uh, to be able to answer the question for those that wonder um, the cost effectiveness if one decides to tuition out high school students. I'm not saying I approve of this, but I do feel that a cost analysis should be done so that the public and the community is aware of those costs. Okay, question, Ms. Boatwright. Um, I have a little concern that if in fact we were to um, 
engage with anybody on something like this. Rogers would be left uninhabited for a while and then you can't go back into it like we've seen in so, so many other school systems. So the timelines typically on these RFPs are, are these contracts to tuition out or 10 years with a one year opt out kind of thing and I would have a problem with that. Can we make that a longer timeline when we... The, that is at the school committee's discretion, whatever, okay. whether they want it for two years, three years, 10 years, or whatever. But I think we also would need legal advice as far as how long a commitment a school department can make in those kind of situations. Right now, this is just looking at a school uh, cost analysis, seeing oh. if there's interest out there, and again, just to do our due diligence. Hold on, just Ms. Neary yep. next. Um, Superintendent, could you just read for um, the public what our demographics are, and that is who we are ask who would be asking to tuition out? Correct. Thank you. So as p part of a draft, and I do welcome any input the committee has to um, add to this, part of the draft that was submitted to the um, school committee was the Newport P Public Schools District is seeking tuition opportunities for its high school students beginning in 2022 school year. Um, then I'm going to, there are approximately 695 students now at Rogers High School, and the demographics are presently 322 female, 373 male, 60 percent of those students qualify for free and reduced lunches, 15 percent have IEPs, 12 percent of the present population, but that has already risen. Um, I believe that's now at 16 percent are ELL. 46% are white, 30 Hispanic, 17% black, 7% Asian, American Indian, or Island Pacific. 65% or more of our students at Rogers High School are involved in a career technical program, and 23% or more of our students are involved in AP or honors classes. And then there's a list of criteria. The successful uh, school system should have the following. And then I listed uh, for instance, competitive and, enrichment and enriching programming that will provide opportunities for our students, safe, dry, and warm facilities, before and after school opportunities that will help enhance their high school academics experience, such as study groups, student council, music and art programs, mock trials, STEM, academic or community internships when and if possible, competitive sports programs, art and music programming that includes orchestra, band, and chorus, appropriate food services and meal plans, appropriate support services, appropriate for children with IEPs um, or our ELL identified counseling and financially, financial to wish tutoring literacy for students and families to obtain not only a successful high school career, but to better prepare them for post-secondary life and an awareness of the opportunities available to them beyond their high school experience any and all advantages students that live with, it, with the school district experience, an ability to apply for competitive scholarships and intern work experiences when available. Thank you. Ms. Bowling. That is the draft. You want to Thank you. Okay. Now, what I, I just wanted to make it really clear again that the school committee is not advocating for this right now. What, what we're doing is really going out and doing our due diligence and making sure that we have all the bases covered because you have to understand that, you know, with the public, everybody has their concerns about the high school. And one of them was, well, what happens? What's your plan B? You know, so this is just being able to say, you know, no one will take our kids or, you know, we'd have to send them to three high schools. It's just so that everybody will know what that might look like if this bond weren't to pass or not, you know, uh, be okayed by the city council, you know, to go to stage three. Dr. Flowers, did you have a... Pretty much, I think, what Mrs. Boland just said, and I think uh, hearing the superintendent's listing of what uh, we'd be looking for certainly tells what Newport Public Schools offers to our students. I myself, too, I'm not... I, I will vote for it just to say you you get the RFP out and just see what flows back. It will be it'll be interesting to see what happens. Any other questions? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 
6.7 is request for approval to issue an RFP for transportation. Uh, is there a motion to approve as presented this evening? Um, so moved. Mrs. Neary, seconded. Dr. Flowers? Yeah. Uh, this is the request for approval. As you know, we've had a multi-year discussion with Durham Bus Transportation. Uh, as a result of a settlement with them, we had worked with them through the fall, summer fall, into the fall, and it, it appears uh, that there wouldn't be much of a cost savings uh, to us, and it, it sort of came down to that we should possibly think about putting the RFP out in order to get contractual Durham will be able to bid on it, of course, uh, but there would be more than likely a, a cost increase to the district for the fifth year. Uh, in that case, the, it is a thought that we would put out an RFP for the transportation uh, for the starting with the next school year. Um, so that's basically what you have before you this evening. Any uh, discussion on the motion? Thank you. I just Mr. wanted. Dr. Yep, oh, Dr. Sorry. Go ahead. I, I just wanted to bring to your attention that Mr. Schmuck from uh, Durham did want to um, send in a proposed possible fifth year. His father did recently pass away, so he did not get it in to us. He was trying to get it to us by October 31st. He may be sending us something or not, but I do believe for those that have been on the phone calls and the transportation discussions with the bus company to only bid on one year, he even said, most likely there wouldn't be a large cost savings to the district. So, and we've also been advised by legal that we need to go out beyond um, a fifth year. We can't go more than a fifth year. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 6.8, request for approval to issue an RFP for the IT department needs assessment. Is there a uh, motion to approve as presented this evening? So moved. Mrs. Neary, seconded. Ms. Boatwright, um, Dr. Jermaine, if you could give us some information on that, if you wouldn't mind. Right, recently, um, as you are aware, we experienced a malware attack in the past, over the past summer working with the city and with our own IT, IT department as well as an outside consultant. We have rebuilt our network and uh, we now will soon have, as best as possible, uh, a new network um, that has sufficient firewalls, everything in place as we move forward. One of our concerns or one of the things we'd like to do before the city hands it back to us is to have an assessment of our IT department and see if, and have a needs assessment done to see if we have the right people in the right places and we also have the right type of staff. <coughs> so I'm recommending that we go out and seek a, an outside consultant or someone to come in actually oversee the IT department working with the city and our present department and to get some kind of report back in a timely manner. Thank you. Any discussion on the motion? Ms. Boland. Yeah, well, um, I'm having a very frustrating night anyway because I can't even get online. <laughs> and I, the IT director couldn't get me online. Okay. So um, it's, you know, because we rely on it. Just so you know, people who have paper in front of them um, uh, you know, are able to see all the documents that way. You know, I, I rely solely on my iPad, so um, it is a problem. But my, so I can't look to see right now. Is there a cost associated associated with that? Do we know what that is? At this time, I do. We're just looking for the RFP for it. Correct. Okay. Yes. Correct. Thanks. Any other questions? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 6.9, request for approval of policy 3155, business funds management policy on the first, changes on the first reading. Is there a motion to approve as presented? Ms. Boland, seconded by Dr. Flowers. Dr. Flowers, if you'd like to um, expound on it. Expound on the <laughs> changes. This comes under uh, business fiscal management funds management and we have this policy 
but we had to add in, uh, well, to edit some points that, uh, giving a, oh, sorry, not near enough, oh my goodness, I mean, I'm not loud enough, <laughs> uh, gives the assistant superintendent the duty to apprise the superintendent and the school committee of the system's eligibility for general or program funds and to make recommendations. <clears throat> and then we put in a um, fairly lengthy section here about when the people in the department will meet monthly to review all of the public and private grants with the city business department and make <clears throat> adjustments if needed a yearly review of all federal, public, and private grants, in addition to uh, some funds that have been referenced already uh, tonight and any other applicable funds. Certain deadlines are set up for quarterly reports for federal grants, expenditure reports, final expenditure reports due in August. I'm just giving some of the highlights here and all the deadlines for these combined reports have to be in, in accordance with RIDE data reporting requirements. And also time and effort documents for staff that are funded 100% by federal grants need signatures at a specific times each year. I'm just gonna scroll down a bit more here. And then uh, that the financial support of the public schools is based on May, uh, several different areas, the local property tax rate, and state aid funds also, and with the different uh, uh, references. So again, it was um, run by a new business manager, and he made a couple of suggestions, just changing a couple of words here, that was all. Any questions? Comment, questions, concerns, seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 610, 6.110. 6.10. Okay, let me 6 just, 6 okay, if I can just get out of this one uh, here. Is a approval of policy 6392, instructional resources and materials and funding. Uh, oh, this is about field trips. Field trips, yes, on the first reading. And uh, there's a concern here. It's some additions that um, uh, allocations for field trips uh, resources are for each school are included in the annual budget. But the school district shall abide by these following protocols in accordance with RIDES, uh, the Education Commissioner's. Um, guidance document as of this past April 10th. And there's a list of how the field trips shall be funded in a certain manner. Students will be permitted to use fundraising to supplement funding for field trips. Uh, and in addition, no one is required to uh, raise this X amount of money in order to be allowed to go on a field trip. The district will not require students to pay a fee or meet that fundraising goal. And the trips had to fall within the basic educational program's definition of a quality expanded learning opportunity if, if, school, if school resources are going to be used. So there are certain parameters that these field trips are for. And then if there are other private trips planned for a chaperone, they fall into a different <coughs> way of funding. And um, I think the rest of it here is all stays the same. But the key points here are is that we're in, in, uh, in line with the uh, Department of Education and what the commissioner had stated as of this past April. <coughs> Thank you. Yeah, Are there any this, this is a, a first reading also. Any questions on the motion? Um, Mrs. Neri. Not a question so much on the, the wording, mm -hmm. but a suggestion for maybe for the superintendent when field trips, um, when permission slips are sent out moving forward. I, 
that the language be very clear that there is no, there's no required fee. Um, I, I received one two weeks ago and it wasn't a required fee, but it was a donation, but the, the section that asked for the donation was highlighted and bolded and the font was bigger. And it, it gave a sense that it wasn't really a donation, but really you needed to do it. So just as we, as we rework permission slips, maybe to make sure that um, if there's any monetary amount listed, that it not be the biggest thing on the, on the form. That's just my two cents. Agree, and a clarification is being sent out. Any other discussion or questions? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 6.11 is request for approval of policy 5146 in school observation on the second reading. Is there a motion to approve it on the second reading this evening? So moved. Mrs. Boland, seconded by Ms. Boatwright. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, so Six that's, in, that's in effect now. Yes, it shall be, reading. yes. Okay. 6.12 is a request to rescind the Newport School Committee action of September 10th, 2019 related to the National Grid Peak Period Response Program. Is there a motion to approve this as presented this evening? So moved. Mr. Leary, is there a second? Second. second. Dr. Flowers. Uh, this is basically an action to rescind the uh, agreement that we entered into on, dis on September 10th, 2019 with National Grid to cut our gas uh, during peak demand hours. Uh, in return, there would be a, a financial gain to the city for doing so. Uh, subsequently, I believe the trust sent a, uh, a letter to Mr. Harrop that suggested that they weren't necessarily in favor of this. However, I personally am disappointed tonight that there's nobody either from the trust or Mr. Harrop here because in my estimation, what we have had agreed to do with the gas company uh, didn't do anything different than we basically do in the schools in the weekend when we turn the temperature down substantially in the buildings uh, when there's nobody in them to save gas and save, elect save energy. So I am disappointed not to have a better explanation tonight. Um, but is there any other discussion on the motion? The trust said it. Okay, seeing those, seeing none, all those in favor of approving, rescinding the action. Can I actually make a comment? Sure. sure. Um, my understanding was that um, Tom Harrop and the school district could back out of it at any time for any safety reasons and things like that. That is correct. And has he determined that that's the best course of action? No. Mr. Harrod? No, after consulting with our insurance carrier, our insurance carrier said our insurance ca um, would be in jeopardy okay. if we participated mm -hmm. in right. this. So then I would assume Mr. Harrop would agree that he wouldn't do that then, right? Probably. Correct. Right, yes. so, so he would have done that, yes. So, okay, thank you. All those Mr. Chairman, if I may, to say he made a comment, I often get flack for being the one vote and this was the one vote I voted against. And I heard a lot of people say to me, what the hell were you thinking on people voting for this the way it was? If you go to your own house and look at your own home insurance policy, if you go away for a couple of weeks, there's a thing on it they're going to tell you. If you go away for more than a month, they tell you to shut your heat down, antifeasure system, and we were going to shut down this heat. I hear what Mr. Gomes is saying, and then they're going to save us some money. But the insurance company says, we're not going to pay for broken pipes and the mold and everything else. So um, I, I didn't support it now, and I surely <laughs> had called up the trust personally and asked them what their thoughts were, and they were like, whoa, you know. So um, that's how this got rolling, you know. So you got to be careful when you vote. Every vote counts, and, then, and you better be serious. I was, thought this was a crazy idea in the get-go, and, it's a, and it, it is, obviously. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Nay. Motion carries 5-1. Who's nay? I was. I believe I was the only one. Oh, so <laughs> Mrs. Boatwright did not vote. So it was 4-1 to one with one abstention. 
6.13, request for approval of direct energy electricity agreement. Uh, is there a motion to approve as presented this evening? Uh, so moved. Mrs. Neary, seconded by Ms. Boatwright. Uh, and I believe uh, the business manager will give us some input on this. Uh, during the early um, weeks in November, um, the controller, Mr. Nolan, at the city made me aware that our insurance um, contract with Direct Energy was expiring this month. So um, I asked his opinion on um, whether or not he thought that there was some real savings to be had with Direct Energy, and um, immediately he said absolutely. Um, so from that uh, conversation, I reached out to um, Mr. Erickton, I believe it was Eric Erickton from Direct Energy, and he gave me three quotes, mm -hmm. um, which should be listed in the backup. Mm -hmm. Do you have any um, particular questions? Ms. You, Neary. Um, why do we have five electrical accounts? There are uh, five locations. Because of, so each building is its own account? That's correct. Okay. Ms. Boatwright. I do have one. Um, you say um, at the bottom that if we were to try to have the same utility contract dates with um, another one, it would be at a much higher rate. And I noticed that they like to go December to December annually, and we had a stop date of February 2021. And I'm just curious whether it would be wise, to, here's the question is, to go back and ask whether they would prefer the other one to change to a December date as well, because it certainly seems like they don't, they did not incent us to go to a February stop. The, um, I believe the reasons that there are ending dates are in December is because when we initiate, uh, initiated our, our first contract, okay. um, I asked specifically about an end date in February um, 2021. That's because three other utilities, the, the one gas that the school has and the gas and the electric from the city mm -hmm. all expire in February 2021. Yeah. I didn't know if I could piggyback and mm -hmm. potentially have some savings there. Uh -huh. The answer was no. no. Yeah, looks like it. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next section is seven. No, there are no discussion items this evening. Next one would be number eight, the consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda in its entirety uh, as presented this evening? So moved. Yes. Mrs. Dr. Flowers, seconded by Ms. Bogart. <coughs> Any discussion on the consent agenda? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next item would be number nine, correspondence. Um, 9.1, correspondence. Uh, is there a motion to, uh, prove, uh, to accept the correspondence as presented this evening? So moved. Ms. Boland, second by Ms. Neary. Any discussion on the correspondence? Yes. Questions? Okay. Questions. Um, Ms. Neary. Ms. Neary has a question on. Where are we? Um, the TMS, the Thompson Middle School schedule update, uh, which so would be 9.1.6. 9 yes. Um, there's nobody here, so. Um, I have a question specific to the pathways just so there are numbers on each pathways that's great um, I understand that students in grades six through eight can choose two pathways is there um, what if so if a student chooses a foreign language pathway and a technology pathway in grades six seventh and eight what well, does, does that mean that that student will never have art no, they still have art as one of their specials in their regular um, uh, Monday through Friday schedule. Okay, but just not as a pathway. Okay, correct. Right. Um, another question for grade five. It says the schedule for grade five is aligned with the remainder of the building in the way of periods and times, and I. 
I put three question marks there because I don't understand I don't understand the curricular purpose of it. I understand the building purpose. I don't understand the curricular purpose behind aligning um, grade five to um, to the periods and times because they grade five is elementary, six, seven, and eight is middle. So I don't I, I don't understand. So all the students in grades five through eight are on the same time schedule. So they, they move at the same time in most cases. Um, there's middle school teachers here, so if you can help me out. If I misspeak, raise a wave at me. All right, so, um, so that's the first thing. What has happened in the past, and this is already under discussion for the middle school, is it's, it appears that grades six through eight are scheduled first. And then whatever's left over as far as openings is grade five. Mm -hmm. And I've had extensive conversation already with the leadership there about this practice. And that's the way we've always done it. But we need to change that. So we actually have had um, some others looking at the schedule mm -hmm. and to change that practice and see how we can better coordinate and align our grade five studies. Okay, thank you. I look, I look forward to hearing an update on that. And there should be an update in December on that. Fantastic. With people here. Great. Um, I was uh, interested and concerned to see um, on the areas that need support. We certainly we lost a grade eight cluster and looking at what the um, the incoming fifth grade class, well, next year's fifth grade class is larger than the eighth graders going, going out. Um, I was glad to see that obviously we've noticed it. Is there a, already a plan to um, essentially to figure out what are we going to do with a much larger fifth grade class coming in next year in terms of uh, scheduling the for next year? Yes, that is under discussion already, and we also know that the rising, we are going to need another full cluster. And we knew that last year right. when we um, did not um, have full clusters at grade eight level. Mm -hmm. So now um, there is a plan for both. And again, hopefully in December, okay. with people present from the school, you will have that update. Great. Um, and last question, I think. <coughs> I have more questions in December. Um, do, does grade five have to be clustered? There has been, so if, so I'll ask this question. Are you asking, can they be self-contained? Yeah. Like, because they're elementary, just right. like here. Right. My understanding is the history at, Ro at Thompson has been they have had the cluster model <laughs> where the teachers do share a group of students. Mm -hmm. How many on that team or, or cluster has varied from year to year. Right now, they do... Um, mirror what we have in six, seven, and eight, mm -hmm. and they have one teacher per content area. I think it's worthy to discuss and review and look at the benefits of both. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions on the correspondence? Yes. Okay. That mostly came from me, so yeah. Um, any, and it's actually for, um, Diane, she and any update, I, I have your, we have your update about the risers, any news on grant funding, on anything for the risers for here? Yeah, please, thank you. Diane Sheehan, art supervisor. Uh, in regards to the risers and the um, 
winger musician chairs. A grant was put in to the Secret Gardens um, grant, and I got information that they do the uh, researching and look over the uh, grants at the end of November, and I will know by December. Okay. But I do have to state that because it is furniture and equipment, it's, it's a hard sell. So that's basically it. Uh, I do have one other comment I just wanted to add about the middle school schedule, if I can, because I've been uh, very involved with um, the um, scheduling initially. But um, when you asked Superintendent Germain about if a student takes an, a pathway that is not art, they do not have art for that year. Oh, at all? At all. So what happens is, as a sixth grader, all right, if they do not choose the art pathway, or which is an art music pathway, right. they do not have that. Now, every year they can change their pathways. So for example, a sixth grader who does art music and then does, um, St uh, is it STEM, STEM technology? STEM, yes. Um, they, the next year, they can change if they want to. But once they're in that pathway for the year, for they the are year. to stay there until the following year. So but it is conceivable that a student can go sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, not elect an art music pathway, and not have it. it so. so I'm learning something. So in fifth grade, do they have art? Yes. The, so fifth. all the fifth graders do. And then when yes. they choose a pathway, I'm to understand you're saying that they do not get any art if they did not change. No. Okay. No. Thank you. No, and, I learned that. Yeah. Thank you. And in fifth grade, they get art once a week, once a week. Right. which is similar to the elementary program. Because they are elementary school so. students. Thank right. you. And thank, thank you. you for clarifying. You okay. can jump up sooner if I make a mistake. Please do. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> thank you. All right. And hopefully with the risers and the musician chairs, that something happens because the school year is progressing. <coughs> we do need that equipment. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Chen, before you step down, yes. who, who gave the OK to put that equipment at, at Triplet School? Uh, that was a question that my music teacher, um, Larry Mock, was asking right at the end of June when we found out that we were acquiring the room, um, but we couldn't get any information of that at all. So nobody knows who gave the okay to move $14,000 worth of equipment into a moldy building? Correct. Thank you. You can't make this stuff up. BC before Colleen. <laughs> Any other questions or discussions on correspondence? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Section 10, reports from superintendent and staff is a uh, motion to approve the reports as presented this evening. Uh, so moved. Yep. Second. Motion made by Mrs. Neary, seconded by Dr. Flowers. Any questions or discussion on the reports? Seeing none, all those in favor uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next, sec next item is 11, suggested meeting dates. And we have uh, November, let's see, November 14th is a Newport School Committee, Newport City Council Liaison Subcommittee meeting being held at Innovate Newport at 5.30 p.m. On November 21st, there is a community charrette to be held at Rogers High School Cafeteria at 6 p.m. Uh, for the uh, discussion of the construction and design of the new high school. Uh, November 22nd, there is an 11 a.m. wellness subcommittee at the Rotary, held in the Rotary Room at the Newport Public Library. <coughs> November 26th, 12.30 p.m., Public, uh, policy subcommittee held in the superintendent's office, Rogers High School, room 305. <coughs> uh, 
Uh, is there a motion to accept the, uh, well, those are just the meeting dates. We don't so need a motion to. December 5th one also, right? Mr. Chairman, no for December 5th. No, no December 5th. School building committee. Mr. Chairman, for uh, uh, items for the next meeting. Hold on, Mr. Leary, yep. Mr. Boatwright. <coughs> Sorry, before our next meeting, there's also a December 5th school building committee meeting, um, 5.30 at Rogers. Mr. Leary. <coughs> so um, I would like to have an, on the agenda um, for next month the, uh, the um, cell phones, district cell phones, um, for an action item. Um, the motion last time was to explore further the number of cell phones, how we procure the phones when needed, and how the city procure their cell phones with an addendum to that. So that, I'm sure you have the information for us, that gave us that information. Now I'd like to put it on for an action item that I will present. Okay. Is that so, it? That's it. Thank perfect. you. Perfect. Great. Uh, oh, Ms. Neary. Yeah. Um, thank you for the draft for the super, from the superintendent um, on the FTEs. I would just like to ask that for the next meeting we have that same information, but in the same 05 to 1314 format instead of the <coughs> current format. And that's for 16, 17, 17, 18, 18, 19. Thank you. Okay. Uh, there is no need for executive session this evening, uh, so a motion to adjourn would be in order. So moved. Dr. Flowers, Mr. Bogart, second, all those favors and signal favors saying aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.